mercy and His grace in a mansion bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. So when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll see and shout the victory while we walk this pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sigh oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be shout the victory let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day just one glimpse of Christ in glory will the torn of life repay oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be I love that last verse. I think I'll just sing it one more time for me. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Christ in glory will the toil of life repay. Yeah, when we all get to heaven, what a day. And shout the victory. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you worry well of victory when there's wonderful power in the blood? There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, power, power wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Well, there's power, power. Wonder working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. This power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Will you be wider, much wider than snow? This power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in that life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Will you do serve us for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, church. There's power in the blood. Will you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, 
power, wonder working power is the precious blood of the Lamb. One last time, well, this power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. This power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for the power in the blood, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Oh. Whew. Praise God. <laughs> Brother Bill's here this morning, and we're going to ask if he can come and help us receive our morning tithing offering while I catch my breath. Amen. Bring your tithing offering this morning. one set of announcements I need to address for those that have got kids going to kids camp tomorrow make sure they're here at 11 a.m. have had lunch it's their first meal is supper at the campground don't forget all the supplies they need make sure they got bug spray it's the season and sunscreen especially and uh, other than that get them excited this time that they get to enjoy God and all of the fun stuff and, and safe environment where they can just enjoy the outdoors without having to be at home. Amen. All right. Okay, guys, I want you to trade every song. Shift them down one, okay? You're doing good. It's on.
about some of the good old songs that just blessed my heart through the years stuff like I hear the Savior say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray finding me thine own Jesus paid it all, all to Him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Church, you see, nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim. I'm going to wash my garments white in the blood. to live by. I like this. Lord, when before the throne Oh, I stand in Him complete. <laughs> See, Jesus died by 
soul to save and my lips will still repeat oh Jesus paid all all to him I owe say Receive my praise in honor of your son. Oh, I'm thanking you for all the grace you give. I know that it's not much to lift my hands and sing, receive this gift, oh God. My praise, my love. Lord, receive my praise in honor of your Son. Lord, I'm thanking you for all the grace you give. Oh, I know that it's not much just to lift my hands and sing. Receive this gift, oh God. Oh, my praise, my offering. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my praise. We come and adore you. Bow down before you. You are worthy. So one time you are worthy oh you are worthy of my praise take it up one time you are worthy of my praise oh yes you are you are worthy of my God. You, you are worthy. Someone say with me, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. One last time, you are worthy of my praise. For anything, but I just want to worship you, Lord, my King. Here's my life, Lord, take control. All I want to do is worship you. I'm in one voice, church. I'm not asking for anything. I just want to worship you, Lord, my King. Here's my life, Lord. All I want to do is worship you. 
Let's worship you. I'm not asking for anything. God, I didn't come here to petition you this morning. I just come here to tell you one more time, Lord, I, I love you so much. Father, I find that I'm not worthy of one drop of your mercy. But God, I love you because you love me in spite of myself. Father, so I've come to worship this morning. I've come to bestow on you my praise. That when I lift you up, I get lifted up. See, I'm not asking for anything. I just want to worship you, Lord, my King. Here's my life, Lord, take control. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is worship you. Jesus, you are all the work to me. Without your love, I wouldn't want. that song. I'm not going to sing it this morning. Well, maybe I'm not. Your goodness is a treasure. I'm so unworthy of. I submit my fragile heart to the wonder of your love. Embrace in your forgiveness. My soul could not when all is said and done comes down to this Jesus you are all the world to me without your love I wouldn't want to be you gave your life so All over the world to me. Of all in life that matters, all that I hold close, glory. Just to know you, Jesus, that's the thing that matters most. For when I did not know you, Cross your choice. So with every breath I take, I lift my voice. One time, church, Jesus, you are all the world to me. Without your love, I wouldn't want to be. You gave your life, you gave your life. So I could live now my life to you I give Jesus you are all the world to me Jesus you are all the world to me then sings my soul Thou art. How great thou art. 
Come on, come on, how great. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. give a big thank you to you all five of you sitting on the front row you did an awesome job of sharing way to go i think we need to make this a habit all right hang on a minute hang on a minute <laughs> i want to state one more time uh if you're going to kids camp tomorrow make sure that you've had lunch and you're here by 11 o'clock in the morning and uh some of y'all get to be riding with me in the big green van and some of y'all probably be riding with Sister Becky in the little green uh, SUV. Or little red crossover is what I meant. Not SUV, crossover. Well, 
I know y'all don't want to go back to Sunday school, but if you want to, I guess you can. Well, y'all get out of here. Go on now. You can go to, go to Sunday school. Praise the Lord. I forgot to grab my hands-free device up there this morning, but that's okay. If you have your Bible, please turn it to Mark chapter 10, verse 46. I'll try not to have any more confusion by giving you the wrong verse like I gave you Thursday night. I said Matthew and I meant John. Who put it on me, baby? I don't, it, yeah, this is live, all right. Maybe I can hold it, it'll be hands free in my hand. Here we go. Let's see if we can get by with that. Mark chapter 10. I want to speak to you for at least an hour and a half. How many of y'all would let me expound on the word for an hour and a half this morning? Amen. I don't see a whole lot of heads are nodding yes, but... They got wise your way there. Well, no, I ain't going to take three hours, four and a half hours, six hours. Yeah, no, I... Honestly, if there's one thing I've learned in the few years I've been behind the pulpit, sometimes it's not the abundance of words, but the lack thereof that really drives the point home. And so, as Brandon once told me, you preach so hard for the 15 minutes you preach, you fit in more hard words in those 15 minutes than most people do in an hour. I don't try to preach hard. I just let God use me however he sees fit. And the truth of the matter is, God isn't only interested in using me. He's interested in using you. I want to say publicly thank you to Brother Jerry and Sister Teresa. They came over and worked on our back room this week. And they did a beautiful job. I've heard nothing but compliments. And we appreciate it. In case you didn't know, now you know. Can we just... Not only do I want to say that, to, would y'all mind if I lose this jacket? It's brand new. I'm about to sweat it all out. It ain't even going to make a whole day without me having sweat rings in it. I think I've worn that once before, but hallelujah, this will be better. I'm about to become my grandfather here. Hold on. I'm going to get a preacher going. I also want to say, uh, I don't know when I'll get to be back in the pulpit, but some of y'all have gotten to a place now where you're taking for granted the TVs and their hard work. It's not easy to do what our people in the sound booth does. Sister Jenny runs our TV, and, and when she's not here, Sister Candace does. Can we just tell them we appreciate them? And if y'all have had an opportunity, as many people have, it's amazing how many people are tuning in to our pre-recorded broadcasts online. It, and you know what? It's a ministry that is really second to none. And if you appreciate the quality of sound you have, and if you don't, you should. How many of y'all have ever heard feedback in the church? Have you heard? I'm talking this church. Have you ever heard it? We've heard a little low-end rumble, but most of the time, no loud high-end squelch. And that's because we have a young man back there that has done everything within his power to learn how to run this system. Can we let Darren know that we appreciate him this morning? That being said, when we're all here assembled together as a worship team the way we're supposed to be, I really believe that this church has a worship team second to none. If you've ever served on one of the worship teams in the church, can you stand up for me? Sister Gloria. You Sister Linda Lou. Yeah. From what I heard a couple Sundays ago, she, she helped out. Listen, some of y'all think that we're all just born with the gift to get up here and do what we do, but that's not even close to the truth. Some of us, 
really, really are frightened by it. And when I say frightened, I mean scared to death. Every time we get behind the microphone, and that's okay. But I'll tell you this much. Without these people that are standing, Vicki and I couldn't travel. Without these people that are standing, when we go, y'all would be left without music. Because they're willing to step into our shoes. And those aren't exactly small shoes to fill. I'm appreciative of these folks. And if you are too, can you let them know you really appreciate it? Thank you so much. I do love every one of you. And if you don't know that, you should. Especially Sister Gloria. She's always got the prettiest hair. <laughs> if I knew where she got her hair done, I might go get some done for me. <laughs> You'll tell me later. All right. <laughs> How many of y'all have had a chance to go over and see Brother Joel and Sister Robin's Pond? You need to make a chance to do that. Once he gets this cleaned up again, he had a little trouble there for a while, but I'm telling you, it's beautiful. They've got koi and goldfish in there, and all of their koi and goldfish gave birth to babies. So they're going to have thousands of fish running around in that pond. By the end of fall, you ought to be able to see them more than just a speck. It's going to be beautiful. I appreciate what they've done there. I appreciate that they're part of the church. God brought us Brother Neil, and I appreciate him. He is one. <laughs> you know what? Everywhere I go, I find out God's got characters, and we got two here today that, honest to goodness, I, I put them in my pocket and take them with me everywhere I go because I never know what they're going to do. And that's Brother Neil and Sister Tanya. <laughs> First time I ever saw Sister Tanya, Sister Tanya said, look at them suits you wear. I know you're rich. Can I have some? And she held her fingers out just like that. Can I have some? And I said, yep, you can have whatever's in my wallet. And there's never been anything in my wallet, has there? I hate to do this because these people get embarrassed, but our church is always clean. And it's because of the effort of a young lady who said, God gave me that church as a place to work when nobody else wanted me. Sister Mary does a beautiful job. Can you let her know that? We appreciate it. Our books are done. Our records are in on time. Most of the time. And that's because of the effort that Sister Donna's put forth from a, a, a ministry started by Sister Luke. Can we let her know? We appreciate it. Sister Allison and Brother Bob are doing a wonderful job with our children. And Brother Bill and Sister Bev, after service, hug them. Tell them thank you. Can you please? Now, I left you two out because when it gets right down to it, Brother Jerry and Sister Therese, you head up our Sunday school program. Mm -hmm. And you do a wonderful job of it. You keep a rotating schedule back there on that wall so that nobody's got to be back there two Sundays in a row or miss more than what everybody else is missing in service. And you know what? That's incredible. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Sister Tiana, I've watched you grow up in this church and you're beautiful, baby. I love you. Yeah. Rachel, God may have gave you to Brandon, but he gave you to all of us too. Yeah. We're very glad you're part of the family. Thank you for being here. And sis, it's good to see you again this morning. So good to see you. When we're on the road, my little man over here, Keeps me straight. Every once in a while, he'll walk up and he'll hand me a song list, which we never do, but he hands me a song list. I, these songs have been on my heart, and we need to do these songs tonight. We'll pick one or two off the list, but we, we give him the idea that he runs the whole drum section. I'm going to tell you, we appreciate the effort that whether he feels good or whether he don't. And you can tell when he feels good like this morning. You can tell when he, feel, when he don't like a couple weeks ago. He's here and he does his part in ministry. I love Varric. 
aren't you glad that he helps us out? We couldn't do any of this without our pastors and their vision for this church. And I want to just say that when they're back next week, take your time, give them a hug, and say, thank you so much for being back. Brother Mike beat us the two weeks you were gone. we just glad to have you. I love our pastors. Can we just... I know they're not here, but... Let's see here. I don't think I missed anybody but my wife. Alex stood with us for worship. Didn't you? You should have. Now, I'm, I'm going to just mention this briefly. You don't need to applaud, but I couldn't do half of what I do without the gift of God to me. She's amazing. I love to hear her sing. Even when we're both in horrible voice like this morning, we just we can't help it. We have a good time praising God. I love my wife. Why did you do that? Why did you take 10 minutes out of our lives to get an appreciation for everybody in the church, Brother Mike? Sometimes. It's just nice to know you're appreciated. And I never want anyone in this congregation to think that I don't really truly love you with all of my heart. Both sides of it, wherever it's at. I love you with all of my heart and I appreciate everything you do because of Jerry, Brother Jerry. I don't have to worry about construction in the church anymore. He just steps up and between Brother Jerry and Brother Joel, they could rebuild the entire church. Brother Derek's taking care of the lawn and he's doing a great job and I absolutely, amen, I'll give him a hand clap with you, Sister Mary. I absolutely appreciate it. When you see him, tell him thank you for all that he does. He, uh, I know he's coming in here in just a minute. He's hobbling this morning, so it must be going to rain. But... I'll tell you what, God loves this man coming through the door right here. Because, amen. We just appreciated everybody. We appreciate all the care you put into taking care of our lawn, Brother Derek. But I, I was just saying that God must really love you because he's kept you alive through circumstances that would have killed any of the rest of us. So he's got to love you. And, and we, amen, and we love you too, Brother Derek. Mark chapter 10 is an amazing passage of Scripture. And though I don't have a whole lot this morning to talk about, I want to talk about this passage because you see, it's one thing to just go throughout service and just believe that it happens magically every Sunday morning and nobody really does anything but pastor who puts in all the work for uh, the sermon. But the fact of the matter is without every member of this worship team or without uh, the lawn being mowed or the church being kept without Sunday school going off without a hitch, this church could not function. We blindly go through everything just not even realizing that the work that goes in behind the scenes, I know we do it not for appreciation, we do it for God, but I wanted to take a moment and just let you know that I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Verse 46 is talking about Jesus walking through Jericho with the disciples. And it says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Tim Timaeus, sat by the road begging. There's not a whole lot to expound on there other than Jesus had just come through Jericho. On the other side of Jericho, he had just healed a blind man. There were two people healed on this one journey. But as he's coming through Jericho, Bartimaeus couldn't help but hear someone say, he heard the crowd. Then he heard someone say, Jesus of Nazareth. And no doubt, somewhere in all of his begging at that gate, that gate where he'd been all of his life, because once you were a beggar in a spot, it's kind of like Iowa City. How many of y'all have your favorite bum? I'm serious now. Amen. Vicky and I have our favorite bum. We've seen him. And he went from being fairly large to fairly skinny. So we feel sorrier for him. <laughs> You're bad, Brother Mike. Come on. You know some of these guys down here make a very good living off of pity. And, and this particular bum is no exception. But Bartimaeus was that kind of a bum. He, he, he had his spot. And he sat in that spot. Have you ever thought about the fact that 
they never really ever moved around. They were just in their place. That's how everybody knew it was Bartimaeus, other than once he got healed, he followed Jesus. It's interesting. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, no doubt sitting in that spot, somebody had told him, there's a man out here healing a blind man. Oh, what's his name? Jesus of Nazareth. When he heard that it was him, Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Watch this. Watch what the disciples do. Then many warmed him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Many warned him to be quiet. Do you know the disciples actually shut up five people who had direct need of Jesus? Bartimaeus was one. Huh. That's interesting, isn't it? You know, the other one was when Jesus looked at him and he rebuked him and he said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Why is it that we as the church try to keep those who have a need from getting to where they need to be? Because it's inconvenient. It was inconvenient to hear this blind beggar who had nothing to offer to Jesus sitting beside the roadside crying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There was nothing he could add to the ministry of Jesus. There was nothing that he had that was valuable to go forth for the cause of Christ. But what he had, the disciples had forgotten about. And that was reckless, blind faith. So he cried out more, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 49. So Jesus stood still. Can you see him walking? And then all of a sudden, it's just... Stop dead in his tracks. And he said to those people that were trying to shut him up, he said, bring him here. It says, and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise. He is coming to you. Hallelujah. You know, I don't, I, I love the words of that song, for nothing good have I, whereby thy grace to claim, I've got to wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's lamb. What? I have nothing to offer Jesus this morning. And many of you, if you were just honest with yourselves, you'd know that you're in my same boat. You have very little to offer God that He don't already have. Hmm. He's coming to you. He's calling for you. He's calling for you. Verse 50. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. You see, the very first thing Bartimaeus did was throw aside his beggar's clothes. His beggar's clothes. If Jesus is calling you, and he is this morning, you don't need to take your filthy garments that you call righteousness. They're nothing but beggar's rags. It's time to throw them aside and just come to Him as we are. Quit pretending to be so holy. My goodness, if you were as holy as you think you are, the whole world would be saved. <laughs> Lord God, help me to watch my mouth this morning. If you were as righteous as you believe yourself to be, you wouldn't need His blood to cover you. Brother Mike, you don't know how hard I try. No, no, no. Sister, brother, you don't know how hard I try. But that doesn't make me any better than I was yesterday. I'm still a sinner in need of a Savior. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. I love it. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? Can you imagine Jesus speaking to each and every one of us this morning? I've told you how special you are to me, every one of you here in this place. But Jesus cries out the louder, no, that's my kid. That's my son. That's my daughter. How special we are to him. And can you hear Jesus say, as he said to Bartimaeus all those years ago, what do you want me to do? 
for you. Huh. The blind man said unto him, Rabboni, which is teacher, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, for your faith has made you well. In the King James it says, Whole, complete. Your faith has made you complete? Wow. And immediately he received a sight and followed Jesus on that road. <laughs> we bow our heads this morning. Father, thank you for your word, for it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, and life to our hearts. Father, anoint me to preach your word simple, straight, and true, and then allow your congregation to hear it and to point it, put it into complete action for our lives. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Mike, you do me a favor and pray for me. I have a horrendous gas in my chest. And I know it's an inconvenient thing, but I, mean, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't have any antacids. Uh, I had shrimp for breakfast. I might have done it. Yeah. <laughs> if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them lay hands on him and pray, and he shall be healed. I don't care about inconveniences. I can get back to this in a minute. It's all right, brother. Man. It's all right. How many of y'all know God's able to heal this man? Right here be kind of hard for me to preach about God healing the blind without seeing him heal somebody in our congregation in need. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke and bind every bit of this bloating, every bit of this gas in Jesus' name. Father, from the top of Neil's head to the sole of his feet, walk through this body and make him feel well so he can receive everything you have for him this morning. Father, you wrote in your word, by your stripes we are healed. So we stand on the authority of that word and command this body to come under subjection to that authority. Father, I thank you right now for the healing that's going through Neil's body. Hallelujah. We give you honor, glory, and praise. Hallelujah. Knowing that you've done this work in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory. Bartimaeus cried out against the crowd. When the crowd said, you have nothing to offer, he cried out louder. Louder. You know, some of y'all have been silenced by some well-meaning saints of God. What? Yeah. You've been silenced by well-meaning saints of God that have said to you, hey, nobody's got time for that. Jesus does have time for that. And instead of quieting your mouth, why don't you cry out the more? Hallelujah. He was determined that he would get Jesus' attention. You know what? I am determined to be invincible until he has finished his purpose in me. Nothing shall shake me. He'll never forsake me. I am determined to live for the King. I'm determined this morning that no matter what the devil throws at me, no matter what well-meaning saint comes against me, I'm going to make it to where Jesus is because I've heard him say come and there's nothing that hell can throw at me that's going to keep me from going. I'm determined this morning. If we could learn from the blind man this morning, maybe we should learn that our determination to reach God will change our situation. Some of us get distracted and discouraged way too easily. 
Well, Brother Mike, you don't understand what I'm going through. No, but I know God. You don't understand my physical ailments that keep me from serving Him. No, but I know God. And God never called you to do anything He didn't equip you to do. I know God this morning. I want the kind of faith that will stop Jesus in His tracks. To where that God has to say, send that boy the answer. I'm tired of listening to him. Hello? Send that boy the answer. Send that girl the answer. Their faith has reached me and stopped me where I'm at. Well, Brother Mike, what happened if everybody in the world did that? Then God would answer a whole lot of prayers, wouldn't He? Your prayer is not insignificant to God. Don't you dare think that you're sitting there and you've listened to the doubters in your life that said you have nothing to offer. All He wants is you. And thank God we can offer that. You see, it's the job of the church this morning. And I do mean the job of the church. To open the eyes of the blind. Brother Mike, I ain't got that kind of faith. Well, that's good. Don't you do it then. I got just enough faith to believe God at His Word. That whatsoever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I've got enough faith to believe God at His Word. That if I lay my hands on somebody in faith believing that they'll receive their sight, they'll receive their sight. I got enough faith to believe God at His Word that when Vicky's suffering from a head cold, I can just put my hand right there across her forehead and pray that it would be released. And it happens every time, don't it, baby? Automatic release. Why? Because I believe in God and I want to get some sleep. Sometimes our annoyances cause us to have violent faith that takes back the promise of God. Paul and Silas are walking through town and there's a mocking spirit behind them, mocking them everywhere they go. And they stop in their tracks and turn around and cast that devil out of that little girl. Why? They were annoyed beyond annoyed and she needed deliverance. What are you talking about, Brother Mike? Sometimes it's faith that's been annoyed that moves the hand of God. Sometimes it's just persistent faith. Bartimaeus was persistent. Jesus, thou son of David, it's Jesus of Nazareth. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. What do you mean to open the eyes of the blind? Listen, there's two different types of blindness. There's physical. That one's almost easy to get healed. You believe God at His Word and He does the work. There's spiritual. That one's a little tougher. You aren't going to help someone be awaken from their slumber or to be able to see from their spiritual blindness overnight. It's going to take persistent faith. But every soul I've ever seen that wouldn't even listen to the message of Jesus, I can still to this day cry out for them, Father God, awaken their soul, whatever it takes you got to be careful when you pray a whatever-it-takes prayer. And you got to be willing to watch your love through, loved ones walk through the flames of hell itself when you're willing to pray a whatever-it-takes prayer. But I think sometimes we should pray that prayer first off. Because then they can get it right quicker. Can you prove that? No, I can't prove that. But I know this, when we release them back to God, that's when He returns them back to us set free. I tried to find a girlfriend. Had five. Vicky had two boyfriends, and one of them was more or less just 
to appease her father. The other one, she, she saw a short red-headed boy and she said, ooh, that's mine. God said, yeah, I'll give it to you. And she cheated. She prayed about it. That's cheating, y'all. Listen to me, very Candace. Y'all want a man or a woman? Pray for him. Right now. Pray for him. It's cheating. You'll have that sucker hooked before you even know it. Brother Mike, it's true. And I'll tell you this, every relationship I've ever seen pray their husband or their wife in are still together today. It's not that they haven't had trouble because when you take two people who think they know each other, put them together and say, there you are, there will be trouble. But it can be worked through as long as we know Jesus. Blindness is not a condition we have to stay in. We can be freed from it this morning. But it takes faith in action, calling out. And sometimes it takes faith in action persistently. In church, we're called to restore sight to the blind. So every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I'm not talking about physical blindness mostly this morning, although if you know somebody that is physically blind, it's time to start praying that God will restore their sight. Well, Brother Mike, what if I never see it? Don't worry about God's will. You just pray that it happens. Let God take care of it in His time. But there are people in our own families that are dying spiritually because they refuse to have their eyes open to the Word. And there must be a point where our faith begins to get tenacious before God. Our faith begins to bug God enough that we have a whatever it takes attitude and release them to the hands of God so that He can open their eyes. Brother Mike, I don't want to see that. Would you love them enough to send them to hell? I really truly believe it's the prayers of brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, moms, dads, grandmas, and grandpas that save the lost. I know it's the blood of Jesus, but those prayers help bring them to a place where they can accept the blood of Jesus. Some of us have been so comfortable in our lives, we didn't even realize it until this morning we're spiritually blind ourselves. If you've got a problem within yourself and you know it, you, you see the blindness, raise a hand and say, Brother Mike, pray for me. I see that hand. I see that hand. Let's pray. Father God, these are your people. You've called them by your name. And you've set them free this morning. I bind every form of hindrance that's come against your people this morning in the name of Jesus. I take authority over every distraction that's keeping them from being the child of God that you've called them to be this morning. Father God, I stand on the authority of your word that declares us to be your children regardless what the world says around us. And I thank you for it. Father God, perform your healing in these your people that were honest enough to say, God, that's me. Perform your healing now. Father, help them to see you clearly and to see your work perfectly and to know that their time is now to step into your work. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. How many of us as every head is still bowed and every eye is still closed? How many of us have loved ones that we know are spiritually blind or we believe are spiritually blind? Raise those hands. I see those hands going up all over this place. Ah, I see those hands. Can we just pray together as a family right now? Father God, I bring my sister and her family before you. Put your loved one in that place. 
Father, I bring all of my uncles before you that have known you in times past, but by deceit and deception and by the voice of the crowd, they've been silenced before you and they've allowed their blindness to stand. Father God, I rebuke that blindness in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I command them to be set free, each and every one of them. Father God, let them realize that their need for you today is greater than it's ever been. And that God, you're real. You love them. But you're coming back soon. And if they're not ready, they're going to miss you. Oh God. I pray that doesn't happen to a single loved one in this place. Father, for all the loved ones represented here that are lost without you this morning. Lord, they're blinded to your will, to your purpose, and to your word. Father God, I, I commit every loved one into your hand. In this place represented. And I ask that you grip their hearts with compassion and love like they've never known before. Oh, Father God, we thank you for that. We praise you because you know how to take care of these needs. We praise you because you're able. And Father, I just praise you because you're good this morning. In Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Whew. Anybody feel like we've had church yet? You need me to preach harder? I can. I won't make that mistake twice. It's good to be in the house of God. If you've had a good time here, I want you just to shake somebody while you're friendly. Let them know that you appreciate them. Amen. Uh, don't forget, if you're going to kids camp, be here at 11 o'clock. Having already had lunch, 11 o'clock here at the church tomorrow. You're dismissed, church.